What we're having a look at today is an Australian-made AR-8 receiver. These were designed for aircraft use in World War II. There were plenty of them around. They were very prolific in the disposal shops back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, plenty of them were ham eyes, totally wrecked, drilled holes for them, altered the circuit so they're pretty hopeless. Any ones you find today look like uh, total wrecks. But this one is very special. It was found in a box in an attic in an old house. It's never been opened, brand new. So what we'll do, we'll um, open it up, see what it looks like inside, see what the components look like, how it was set up, and then we'll apply some power and see if it actually works. And uh, it'll be very interesting after all these years. If it does work, it'll be like using a new set. Cosmetically, it's in very good condition outside. As there was separate front ends from 150 kilohertz to 2 megs and from 2 megs to 20 megs with two separate big tuning dials, it gives it that overall symmetrical boobs look. Big clunky knobs, easy to use with gloves in an aeroplane. These plugs would connect to an AT5 transmitter, the power supply and an intercom system. A few of the knobs relate to the direction finding system that was also associated with these radios. The IF frequency is 755 kilohertz and the broadcast band is divided in two with a little gap in the middle so you can't listen to 3LO on 774 kilohertz. Not that you'd want to these days. The reason for having two separate front ends for high and low frequencies was to ensure optimum performance of the circuits. Also it allowed you to have preset channels on both bands and you could switch between them. The Kenobis had two screws and a special clamp to hold them on the shaft and it was very strong. This is the plug for the direction finding loop. I wish I had an old receipt from the Waltham's Trading Company disposal store. They had a little drawing of a man, Waltham Dan, carrying out, amongst other things, an AR-8 receiver. People sometimes get confused. This is the Australian-made AR-8, not the AR-88 made by RCA and shown here. One of the most iconic of the World War II radios. Looks like it's designed for easy pulling apart. Let's see how easy it is. Oh. Look at that. Maybe because of the metal used, these sets, if left derelict for some decades, look really bad, but this one's in amazing condition. We'll have a look at the internal construction, all the nice tropical covered components. Then after that we might have a bit of a tune around, we'll power it up, see if it works, and uh, tune long wave, medium wave, maybe 160, and uh, have a look at that. Then I think I might uh, see if it works on single sideband, because any receiver to be of any use now has to be able to pick up sideband reasonably well on the HF band, so uh, we'll do that. And then possibly after that we'll uh, tune around the normal AM broadcast uh, shortwave band, see how it performs. If it's getting too long or you're bored, feel happy to uh, spool through to some part that you're interested in or turn off, I don't care, I don't care about ratings. So uh, sit back, enjoy, or not. The IF stages and audio are separate from the RF side. There's a 6J5 driving headphones through a transformer. Depending on the pins used on the connectors, the filament heaters can either be wired up for 12 or 24 volts in a series parallel arrangement. The HT is 250 volts. The volume control is connected to a long shaft to a chain drive. This drives two potentiometers, one for AF gain when using it in RT and one for RF gain in the CW mode. 
there is a feeble bulb behind each tuning dial to indicate which section is in use. Although there's lots of rubber insulated wire, there is some use of plastic insulation. Everything is well shielded to keep broadcast band interference out of the 755 kilocycle IF stage. A 665GT power rectifier valve is connected across the antenna socket. This protects the radio in case an active transmitter is accidentally connected to it. These were manufactured by AWA, Amalgamated Wireless Australia, for use in aircraft during the Second World War. I've got one of the rare power plugs that is designed for these sets. I'm getting 250 volts HT from an old mantle radio. And it just takes 12 volts. That I'm getting from a lithium cell. It's only designed to run headphones but I have got it patched into a speaker. I think it's quite sensitive so it should work okay. After squirting a bit of CRC on the pots and switches it seems to be working okay. It's picking up all that long wave sounding static on around about 140 kilocycles. Let's tune up a bit. That's a differential GPS signal on 317 kilohertz. A few NDBs, there used to be a lot more when I go to the other long wave band. Rabin has the last non-computerised voice for reading out the weather information. Up to the first section of the broadcast band, we're on the middle scale. So again, market share of luxury cars reasonably small, but the market there down a bit. Um, BMW Mercedes Benz. If the Brit Museum won't give it back, I will sneak in under cover of darkness and nick it, and then you can defend me. Only 18 of them are scrapping. Oh, successful. We'd be in Britain. I think we'd have no difficulty being acquitted in Australia once the full story had been told. But you go to the British Museum, which wakes up. Pretty good. Pretty good. Intensity would be about 3% greater from that one degree rise. On the second range of the broadcast band now, and we're on the top scale. Join the leader. Significant penalties for wrongdoers. There was none. Why you became a bowler? Because you're Frank. Been so much. Full of screams. His mother bolted. Sports dog. Made a current half Uh. Anti. Has red hot. The email on the is on every. All cars in Australia. It's emergency warning. He gets the good news that the thing. M and the special narrow band radio. Let's tune up to 160 meters now and see if there's any AM transmissions on. Modulator, except now it's got 811A's in the output. 
Um, fair enough about the filament of the 813 going too. Anyway, I'll stick it back to you, Jim, and just, just have an over and I'll just tape it and I'll, I'll play it back to you. But um, keep in mind that I'm recording you through the 1155, which is a not a very high quality receiver for doing audio recordings through. And secondly, um, you are competing with a, a Strength 9 Plus power leak. Now checking the performance on singular sideband. This is on 7 megs. Um, myself and Brad were having a chat there and we couldn't hear a thing. Now whether you uh, moved up because we were annoying you or whether you uh, just moved um, but yeah, uh, I, I knew you were there originally when you sent the message. I could hear you right on the noise floor, which was at zero. But um, yeah, one hour makes a hell of a difference. What was your mate's call sign over? You know, uh, Stuart and I have got the, uh, basically, you know how we run that, that, that ICOM remote software? Uh, I could just go straight to Stuart's place, log straight into it and control the radio from there, no problems at all. Well that's amazing, that's uh, single side band on 14 megs. You, you make a good point mate, you make a good point. Yeah, I don't know whether mine's got that or not, probably not being, being not an SDR, probably doesn't. Hang on a second, I need to put the uh, amplifier back into cat mode because uh, it's detecting the wrong frequency sometimes, hang on. Back on 7 megs. And uh, I will go and have my dinner and watch tennis and then uh, wake up. I don't know I need to play my tennis. Cheers Peter, all the best. We can 3YG, we can 3FK. This is 3.5 megs. Oh, something like that. That's why they make those um, those Hawk models. What's your noise for? What 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 are you? What noise issue you got there? Well, I'm not sure. It's 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 coming through probably uh, nine plus ropes. Yeah, the problem with this, uh, I can't see a transformer too close to us, so uh, we need to track the sound because it's a uh, bit of a pain, pain, in the, pain in the ass. But anyway. Okay, AM tune, two to five megs. On the middle scale, nine down to five megs. David Shipman. I've been saying it's urgent for 30 years. I mean, well, I'm saying. 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 I'
，中美是全球的重要贸易合作伙伴。And lastly, 10 to 20 megs. 不，阿爸的门还是丢我们干。过山姆，一点雨水都没有好吧？好快，真好。看到木盖瓦的。七，六，高速可以。不错，来一点。当然了。其他你琢磨他呢？他这样来哦。Well, I'm really impressed with the AR8. The RF performance is very good. And the audio quality is excellent, and this is totally unmodified, straight out of the box. I don't know how to finish this video, we'll just finish by going back to the start. Thank <laughs> you.